everyone, it's Vanessa. I'm here to wrap up all of the books that I ended up reading in January and it was quite a lot of them so I'm gonna try to get through them as quickly as I can. So the first book that I finished is called Other Boys. I think I started this one on New Year's Eve but I didn't finish it till the new year. This one is a juvenile graphic novel memoir of Damien Alexander growing up. It's about Damien understanding his gender identity and his sexual identity in middle school. His parents are out of the picture, his mother passed away and that's something that Damien Alexander touches on a lot in here is missing his mother and uh, the memory of his mother. He is raised by his grandparents who are actually really overall, especially his grandmother, accepting of his differences in how he expresses his gender identity. It was a nice graphic memoir but I don't really remember that much about it honestly and it's already been a month. Then after that I finished Infinite Country which was another one that I started in 2021 and finished at the beginning of 2022. In this book we're following a teenage girl who commits a crime and ends up going to a correctional facility for teenage girls. You kind of learned why she did what she did and while that is kind of like what starts the story, it's not really what the book is mostly about. It's mostly about this dynamic between this family, how they immigrate to the United States and some of them end up coming back to Colombia and how the family like being separated, how they part ways and change over time. I really enjoyed the parts about the teenage girl more than I did the mother and father. The mother and father really take a central role in this, but that's just, I think, a personal choice. Um, there are a lot of trigger warnings in this book and for how short it is. There were a lot of things that happened that were hard to listen to. After that, I finished Frankie and Bug, which I didn't love as much as I thought I was going to. I think I ended up giving it three stars because there were aspects of it that I really did enjoy, like this new friendship that was forming and also the setting and time period. This is set in California in like the 70s. There's like a serial killer that they're trying to discover. I also really enjoyed the adults in this book. They created this like really beautiful found family. What I didn't really love about this book is seeing how the depiction of Frankie developed over the book. Like I knew that this was going to have themes about trans identity, but I think the, the way that it was really delivered I think it didn't suit what I wanted from it. It came across like heavy-handed and that the thing that she wanted to like check off of like having a trans main character was more important than like having it feel fully fledged. Obviously like in this book she's writing it in a way where it's like fit for the time though I'm like really happy that a lot of trans characters are being written especially in middle grade books. I'm gonna talk about another one. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't work, you know? And I think that that's what was lacking in this book is having that work. Now this one we're gonna have a discussion about. So I was really excited about this book because the way that it made it sound was that it was going to really focus on conspiracy theories and how a person can really get wrapped up in that. A woman finding out this about her boyfriend that was like not expected of him and then her like taking revenge on that. It's supposed to be like a book that's really online and like really focuses on apps and how we all live in these worlds. Yeah, this book just went on a on a whole train wreck. It started really promising and up until the point where she goes to like the women's march, I thought it was it was fascinating and I was I was on board. But then after that, there's like a twist that happens in like a third of the way through the story that like changes the whole trajectory of the story. She ends up like going to a different country and things like that and and the boyfriend doesn't even really become he's not an important piece of the puzzle at that point. The main character is just like someone I, I did not root for and usually that doesn't bother me, but for this one because I didn't love where the story was going, I really was not rooting for her at all and the choices that she was making when it came to, you know, men and her own life. So I ended up giving this one two stars. I now understand why this has 2.96 average rating on Goodreads. Um, I can kind of see why people like this book and I thought that I was going to be one of those people, like one of those people that are kind of the only ones that like it, but didn't end up that way the last two-thirds of the book. It just went downhill. After that I read How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith. I think maybe just travelogues aren't for me when it comes to this sort of thing because some places that they go to and some stories that they're telling are just more interesting than others and sometimes I feel like because you're going to different places and telling stories of those places there's not like a, a thread that really puts all of these stories together. One thing about this book is that you can really read any chapter and like you've read something interesting but like you don't have to read all of them all together and I think that would be what would make this book more successful is if I like if I had to read the first chapter and the third chapter for them to like make sense together and to build on each other. It was more like what he was seeing and what he was witnessing and who he was interviewing when he was at different museums and like monuments and national uh, registered places. I 
found a lot of those places really fascinating especially like he went to the whitney plantation which i had never heard about which was really interesting and he also went to angola prison um in louisiana which was also really fascinating and like even the way that the prison is set up and like the way that they tell the history of the prison there by like the wardens is like well, kind of creepy the last chapter where he takes his grandparents to the national museum for black uh, history and culture was really really fascinating just like having them look back on their own lives i did really enjoy the chapter about new york city and i learned quite a bit i feel like I, I knew some of those things but some of the things in the new york city chapter are really fascinating especially considering like a lot of people who live up north don't think that like racism was a thing there or that you know like slavery didn't happen there so while i thought this was really good in parts i didn't think that it was perfect like a five star read like so many others have uh, rated it so i ended up giving it four stars after that i read a middle grade book called a kind of spark and this is by Ellie McNichol and this features a main character who is autistic she is learning about witches in school and she starts kind of relating herself to them and how witches were really outcast in society just because they were different so then she kind of makes that connection between herself and witches as she's trying to like make the the town that she's living in create a like monument or like a place that signifies like that this was wrong that it happened to these women before I started reading this I had no idea that it was going to be set in i believe it's scotland so the audiobook narration had an accent and i really enjoyed that and just like the town feel like she goes to town council meetings and stuff which i really enjoyed because you get to see like all of the different kinds of people that exist in this town i also really enjoyed the main character's sisters she has two sisters who are twins and one of them is also autistic so she gets to discuss like what she's going through with that sister and then she has another sister who's like really involved in youtube and she's like a beauty guru which was also an interesting thing to see happen in a middle grade book because I think kids would like that. I also enjoyed the parents in this book. I enjoyed the arc of the story as it continued on. It had a really nice message. There is a teacher in here that is really hard to read about. I know that this is written from the author's perspective of growing up autistic because she herself is autistic. Like the things that happen in the story I, I believe to be true. Like t-shirts are mean to people who are different and to kids who are autistic for sure. But it's hard to read that teacher in here because she is just so mean but overall i really did enjoy this i love the ending and i gave it four stars after that i read welcome to the new world this is by jake hopperin and michael sloan and this is a collection of basically it was a new york times series that was written about this family who was moving here from syria as refugees and creating a new life here the thing about this is that it's from stories that were written for the new york times and then created into a graphic format and so a lot of it feels like things that are pulled of different stories that are not like narratively structured to create like a beginning middle and end um that it sometimes it was a little frustrating and i was sometimes confused by like what was happening a lot of the ways that the pictures are drawn especially of the oldest male son in, in the family he is always drawn in a very particular way he's just angry 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 like every page where he had that emotion looked the exact same so i didn't really look love the illustrations at the end of the day here he is angry again i totally get why he's angry but just like the illustration style of it is what um made it difficult so i did learn quite a lot i just didn't like the as a story from beginning to end um and i gave it three stars then i read mary jane by jessica anya blau and i really did end up enjoying this i ended up giving it four stars this is a book set in 1970s baltimore and the main character is like a really conservative raised girl she she does everything that her mother tells her she's prim and proper she ends up getting a job where she is um, babysitting a young girl during the summer as her dad is treating a like a rock star who's dealing with addiction issues the man brings his wife along so then it's like this full house of you know the psychologist and his wife and then the man that he's treating and then his wife and then mary jane who's coming in there and then the little girl that, that she's taking care of it becomes this like new sort of family and a different kind of family that mary jane is used to the kinds of things that they are talking about and the kinds of issues that they are dealing with kind of open mary jane to this new world what makes a family structure and like what men and women should be like what experimentation is like and mary jane's mother has no idea about any of this right like if mary jane's mother knew this she would definitely not be babysitting this little 
little girl. Mary Jane really becomes kind of like a central figure in this family of like keeping everyone together, which is kind of beautiful in a way just to see her shine and like to see how everyone is pulled to her even though she's just like a normal girl and kind of questioning to herself, do I want to live my life like my mother's been living it or do I want to live it in a way where it's more free and more open? I didn't love the ending of this. I thought it was a little saccharine and a little bit too like a nice bow to it and it ended up like too sweetly for me I think but I feel like the ride of this and like just the coming of age story is what I love I love that in adult fiction so that's what I love the most about this is seeing Mary Jane change over the course of this summer after that I read a um, essay collection and that was the 2000s made me gay by Grace Perry I really enjoyed this one I ended up giving it four stars overall it's a book of different essays based on like pop culture and like the late 2000s for the most part the author is trying trying to look into how gay people were featured in the media, the pop culture that made her. Trying to see like how that affected her, understanding her own sexual identity and gender identity. There are a lot of things in here that I really connected with. Like some of the topics that she mentions and focuses essays on include like Harry Potter, Mean Girls, Katy Perry, The OC and Gossip Girl, Disney Channel movies, Glee, The Real World and The Challenge, which I really liked that chapter as well. I thought that she was really insightful she was really funny there are things in here that she says that really opened up my mind to like how the pop culture that I was raised on which is the same as hers pretty much because she's only like two or three years older than I am how that impacted like the way that that you saw yourself in that time period. Stories that I think are really vulnerable and she's really open about what she was dealing with. I definitely would only recommend this if the topics that I mentioned are things that you grew up with because I think that's what makes this fun and interesting is that I knew what she was talking about. So after that, I read Too Bright to See and this is um, another book about trans identity. Like I mentioned that I was gonna talk about another one. This is by Kyle Lukoff and I thought this one was a lot more successful than Frankie and Bug. This one is set in present day so it feels more true to like how how identity is is seen today in this book it uses also like a haunting in this house that they're living in and um, the death of an uncle to really think about identity so it uses that kind of like a metaphor keeps coming back to that to kind of signify what it's like to not know who you are and then finally understanding a little bit more about who you are it's really funny because in this book the main character is also called bug at the beginning of the story just like Frankie and bug which is the other character's name I do think that this book took too long to reveal kind of like what the character is really going through and it leaned too much on like asking and asking and asking even though you kind of knew like where the story was going in that sense it's what made it a little bit predictable to me i also thought that the ending of it was a little bit too easy i hope that this is like reality but i i just felt like it it isn't reality just yet it's very accepting and i believe that from the mother like 100 percent it felt like really really accepting from the school perspective of it they have like a whole meeting and like the way that they talk about like having a bullying policy and like what that is like it just seemed like something that i feel like was wrapped up really nicely at the end and i wish we could have seen what it was like after the fact after the main character comes out what it was like to go back to school um we don't really get a lot of that i did enjoy the like haunted aspects of this of the house and i also really enjoyed the relationship between the main character and the uncle and understanding like the uncle's history as well i ended up giving this one i think four stars after that i read yusuf asim is not a hero and this book i ended up giving um three stars what i think hampered my enjoyment of this book is how long it was it did feel like it needed to be cut a little bit just like how long it takes to get to the point it's a book that's almost 400 pages for a middle grade novel i think it's a little bit too long we are focusing on a young boy who's creating this like robotics team in his school it's loosely based on a story that happened out of texas where a boy was basically like arrested because he had you know a piece of technology that they thought was a bomb and looking back on the 20th anniversary of 9 11 to discuss what it's like being muslim in this really small texas community they're trying to build a mosque in this town and then there's also kind of like this group that is 
joining together i think they call themselves like the patriot brothers or something like that telling them to go back where they came from and things like that a lot of middle grade books that i read where we talk a lot about you know like antagonists i feel like they are very villainous that happens definitely in the world i think a lot of the times the the racism that a lot of people feel is actually a lot more subdued and um the way that it happens is happens a lot more behind the scenes and it is not as over of like saying like go back where you came from at the town council meeting like in front of their faces i think maybe it is over because it is for a middle grade audience i think it's a lot more sinister than that in general i really enjoyed the main character what he stood up for i don't read a lot of boy main characters in middle grade so that's always something that i'm trying to read more of i read too much in january I finished Five Tuesdays in Winter by Lily King and this is a book of stories. I really enjoyed some of these stories and then some of these stories I didn't love as much. I'll tell you what my favorites were so you can kind of get a sense of it. Um, I didn't think that these stories really had like a consistent theme or thread and I'm finding out about myself that I do really like that in short story collections where they all kind of meet a central theme and like go together. Some of these I didn't really feel like they went together. My favorite story in here is definitely Timeline and also Hotel Seattle and Creature. And I think what I, I liked about those is that they were not what I expected. Like they started one way and they really developed throughout the story and that they were kind of weird. And I think Lily King really does write great characters. Um, but I think some of these stories, I just wasn't as interested in like what the plot was in the story. And that's why I didn't love those as much. I ended up giving this one three stars. Another one that I didn't quite love, but maybe i'd read the next one in the series is called the witch's hand it's the first book in this graphic novel series called the montague twins i picked up because it was a mystery and it's like teenagers who are trying to kind of nancy drew or boxcar children find out what's going on in their small town what i did not expect about this and maybe that might make you want to pick it up more probably would have made me pick it up less is that it has a lot of fantasy elements in it like there's a real real witch here with powers flying and I think that that kind of thing really is not as much for me when it comes to mysteries. I would have rather it just be like a Nancy Drew kind of mystery where it's completely realistic. I also thought the way that you're plopped into the story you're kind of confused for like the first half of it. At times I thought that I was going to DNF this book but I did keep reading it and then I, I felt like all of it came together where I was understanding where the characters were coming from and like how they related to each other and how they were all connected. The two brothers they're staying with a family that's not their biological family so then you're trying to understand like where how they're all connected with each other. I feel like the second volume I'd probably like more because I know what's happening now like who the characters are. I ended up giving this one three stars and last but not least i finished oh beautiful by jung yoon and this is a book that i really really enjoyed probably the best book in this pile yeah this one and maybe like the 2000s made me gay and mary jane were my favorite reads of the month and this one i enjoyed so much because of the themes that it really dealt with a lot of people think that this book is over the top and usually i like i can tell those things right away and i'm i'm really suspicious of that and usually that really bothers me but i think in this book because i, I so agreed with what was happening and like what the main character is dealing with and has dealt with those themes just felt like real to me and they didn't feel like something that she was trying to sell to me i guess keep that in mind as like if you if that bothers you in stories when it's a little bit on the nose if that bothers you that maybe this is not for you anyway the main character in this book is a model turned journalist who has a story in north dakota that she is going to be writing it focuses on the oil boom that's happening there with natural gas and all the fracking that's happening as you can see from the front cover how all of these people land on this new boom that's happening there and how the town is really changing a lot of the things that she's talking about or witnessing have to do with like race and gender class imbalance man the main character is really messed up and she's going through a lot like emotionally and understanding like am i right for this like can i be a journalist she's given the story by an old professor who's kind of sketchy and you're learning more about like who they were when she was in school and what their relationship was like it really comes to a head at the end of the story and i think that it's done really 
really well. It, this is a very like slice of life kind of a story where there's not like a big thing that happens but just like little things are happening that then kind of all culminate together. I really enjoyed like losing myself in this world. It's like a really gritty and like uh, not clean world. There's like not enough housing and like the development that's happening is like really changing and breaking down the town and like the people who used to be here feel a certain way who have grown up here feel a certain way the people who have the rights to these minerals that are in the ground feel a certain way and then it also mentions like native americans who live in the area and how they feel and how different people are dealing with it this calls back to a book i read called yellow bird oil murder and a woman's search for justice in indian country by sierra crane murdoch it's a book that i read a couple years ago but it's a non-fiction book what that greediness looks like and what that change looks like in that town is also something that happened in here that i really enjoyed obviously in a fictional setting also with a different kind of main character because she's an asian American. A lot of really interesting insights in this book that I really enjoyed. I believe I gave it four and a half stars when I was done with it. So that's it for all of the books that I read. That was a lot of books. So if you've read any of these books, please let me know down in the comments. Or if you'd like to read any of them now that you've heard about them, let me know in the comments as well. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Now we can return these. Woo!